If there's one thing I've learned being around the Sonic fanbase as long as I have, is that there are only two consistencies. Sonic Twitter is absolutely atrocious, and there will always be an argument. But perhaps the most prolific of these arguments has to be the Boost and Adventure debate. The Boost and the Adventure are a style of a Sonic gameplay that have been around the longest, being the most consistent. Now there have been obviously a few diversion of these, like the storybook games in Sonic Lost World, but most commonly, most Sonic games, at least mainline, stay with the formula of either Boost or Adventure. Now I do believe that both these gameplay styles have their merits, but also they both have some disadvantages. So I'll start off by talking about the Boost, and then I'll talk about Adventure. Now the Boost gameplay is actually really fun. It's the most speedy out of the two gameplay styles, allowing for instant acceleration to max speeds and zooms you across and focuses on reflex-based gameplay. You're supposed to dodge, slide, quick step, and avoid all these obstacles. And I really like this, it just shovels you, like boosts you around the area where you get to see great sights, avoid the obstacles, and overall the boost gameplay is just really fun. It's fast paced, it never lets down, and while it does get interrupted by some platforming occasionally, and the platforming here is definitely worse than what's found in the adventure games because the boost controls aren't exactly built for platforming, which is why something like the Sonic Colors layout worked so well. So in the end, the boost really doesn't fare well in platforming, but it's at its best when it's blasting around at super speeds, you just get to see the sights while quick stepping and avoiding robots, and overall, it's pretty good. Now the boost really does nail down to the controls, how easy it is to be precise with your movements, and so they've introduced a few mechanics that allow you to control that, being the drift, the quick step, and the homing attack, well no not the homing attack, that's been there for a while, anyway, the boost, the drift, and the quick step. The drift and the quick step are the two most important as they allow for easy control of speed. The quick step was handled pretty well in most games, although I do believe the one in Sonic Unleashed was a bit too wide, and same with the drift as well. The Sonic Unleashed controls just generally were too loose, and I'd often find myself slipping off edges, but I do believe that controls were perfected in Sonic Generations, which is why this is basically my all-time high starting point to compare it to. Sonic Generations is, I do believe, the best that the Boost game has ever been. But Sonic Unleashed is also really good. However, not all shines bright for the Boost formula, as it does have a major disadvantage, that being the game length. Now, the Boost games are mostly going to be really short in length because of the development cost that comes with designing such huge and expansive stages for Sonic to run in. That's why most Boost games are around 5 hours long. That's not great, but it certainly does complicate things a bit, because while on its own, the Boost gameplay is really fun, it does lead to a few compl complications with the game development. And along with issues with the platforming, also it doesn't make it that great, but I do believe that the speed and the exhilarating gameplay really make up for it, and Propel the Boost has easily one of my favorite gameplay styles of all time. Except it has to be done right, so not unleashed controls. Sonic Adventure is the gameplay style mainly used throughout the Adventure era, as is in the name, and the Dark Era as well, which it persisted throughout. And the thing is, it there were a lot of bad adventure games. Sonic 06, Sonic Heroes, Shadow the Hedgehog, all these, not great. So when I'm talking about adventure, I'm mostly going to be focusing on the first two adventure games, as I do believe those are the peak of the controls and the formula itself. Now these two are interesting, because while Sonic Adventure 2 focuses more on speed, Sonic Adventure 1 focuses more on platforming, at least with the Sonic controls. So Sonic Adventure 1, starting off, has a really good mix of like, an open blend of level design, while allowing you to build up speed through use of platforming and good spin dashes. The adventure games thus have this philosophy where the player has to earn their speed through clever movement, which is shown like in the first zone of Sonic Adventure, you can spin dash onto the, over the bridge through the ramp, and it's just really fun in general. Building up speed feels good, but admittedly, you don't get to keep it for too long. The Sonic Adventure games are generally quite a bit slower than the boost formula, and acceleration does take longer. However, they do still have the spin dash which helps a lot out with that. It mainly feels like a translation of the improvements that Sonic 2 made into a 3D space. Now Sonic Adventure 2, on the other hand, is a bit more linear in its design, and while it still does have open-ended platforming you can always explore, it does focus more on giving you speed, and I actually quite like that, which is why Sonic Adventure 2 is my favorite of the control styles. Because I do think that games 
really need to have a decent amount of linearity. Not overloading, of course, they should definitely still have options for the players who like to explore, but I feel like linearity is a pretty good thing to have. Unless you're making an open world game, of course, in which case, definitely no to the linearity. But still, Sonic Adventure 2 is my favorite, because here you do get more opportunities to build up and maintain your speed through clever platforming, while in Sonic Adventure 1 you more so had to make those opportunities for yourself through clever platforming. So in the end, the philosophy of the adventure formula is to have you earn your speed. While you don't keep it for very long, it does feel satisfying to earn it in the first place. Aside from the boost formula's way of just giving you speed, but giving you the satisfaction of maintaining it. Now these two are very great philosophies, and they do allow for a ton of satisfying gameplay. But which one of these is my personal favorite? And with me, it really comes down to what I seek more out of a game. And what I want is just to have a thrilling time. Now while I'm all, of, I'm all for platforming and clever puzzle solving challenges, I do really like it when games give me the opportunity to just go fast. And that's what the boost formula does. It focuses on the satisfaction of maintaining speed, which I admittedly like a bit more than the satisfaction of building up your speed in Sonic Adventure. And while the boost certainly does have weaker platforming than the adventure games, uh, that wasn't the element I was psyched for most in the, to begin with. When I play Sonic, I want the speed, and the exhilarating levels, and the fast-paced build-up, up and maintaining the speed, which is what the boost formula provides more so than the adventure formula. But that's not to say any of these games are bad, no, Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Generations are equally my favorite Sonic games. I don't prefer one over the other, because both of these styles are excellent and they're both fun in their own merit. I just prefer the boost formula myself, but let me know which one you prefer. That's it for me, Devron, signing off.